Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Thank you for joining us, joining us this morning uh, during this Sunday time. And we appreciate you being here with us. We know you're here by a divine appointment. And we just say thank you, God. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer, which is from Daily Word, and that's September the 5th, 1962. And it is, the same healing spirit that worked through Jesus works through me. Again, the same healing spirit that worked through Jesus works through me. Let's just breathe into our soul space right here and right now. The same exact living Christ spirit that Jesus lived from consciously resides within our souls. Just breathe that truth into your life. Let it permeate your heart space, your soul space, your body, all the way out into your aura. You are one with the one. You are one with this Christ presence. And as we breathe into that truth and we remember who we are, we know and affirm there's only one presence and one power, one life, one substance, one God. We only know there's one joy for us and one faith to tap into. So again, let's breathe into that space. Let's center ourselves, anchor ourselves this morning in faith, a hope faith that will truly open doors and bring clarity, clarity to all of our lives. And if we truly believe this truth, as I know you do as good Unity True students, we will use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This morning, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Reverend uh, Ken Fendrick. He is going to be doing an internship here at Unity Way Church with myself and also our church community for the next six months. He is a student of Un uh, Unity Urban Ministerial School, and I'm just real excited to invite him to the platform. He's going to introduce himself, and he's going to be reading our daily word this morning. So I'd like you to welcome Reverend Ken. I'd like to thank you, Reverend Michael, for not only sharing the platform with me, but sharing your church and, and really welcoming me into this spiritual family. Uh, again, I am a fourth year student at Urban Ministerial School and looking to learn ministry from an awesome minister here, as well as each and every one of you. I've had the chance to meet a few of you, and I, I know it's going to be a very fun and enriching time this next six months. And I just look forward to not only learning ministry and interning here, but also being a contributing and a member of this vibrant spiritual family. So thank you all for your welcome. And right now I'd like to move us into our daily word. And today's word is faith. Our affirmation is my faith lights my path and guides my way. And let's just take that in for a moment. And as Advent season begins, my thoughts turn to faith. I believe in my capacity to be hopeful, assured, and strengthened as I embark on this journey of faith. Faith keeps me open to discovering reasons to have hope, even when I do not yet see any evidence for the hopefulness. Faith gives me assurance that my indwelling divinity will lead me to accomplish all that I set out to achieve. Faith fortifies me with the necessary strength to transcend the limited human knowledge, allowing my divine wisdom to guide my thoughts and my actions. I believe in good things to come, and I believe in my ability to bring those things into manifestation. I am grateful for the gift of faith. And our scripture reading that goes with the word today is from Romans Chapter 15, verse 13, and it states, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Namaste, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. I do appreciate that. We're going to have a lot of excitement and a, a grand spiritual adventure. 
before uh, we go into that, though, I want to sync up with Sant Unity. Charles and Myrtle were called to Sant Unity. That's why they're not here this morning. They're working together, holding the fort down there at Unity Village. So I just wanted you not to be concerned. They are okay. What I'd like to do now is to sync up with Silent Unity. So I'd invite you just to hold that thought of illumination. And as we sync up back with the village, back at Unity Chapel, we remember that uh, in 1880, or excuse me, 1890, Myrtle had this divine idea of having and creating a sacred space of silent unity, originally called the Society of Silent Help. And since 1890, that has been a beacon for our movement that there's always been someone in that sacred space in that chapel holding the vision for prayers being answered. So again, as we uh, connect to that energy back at Unity Village, back in Missouri, we know that we are blessing all those silent unity workers, and they are also blessing us by the power of of omnipresence. And I just want to say thank you, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, and thank you all the workers who have worked in the past at Silent Unity and will can, who are working there now, but also those who will work in the future. It truly is a divine idea. So let's soak up that energy and know that we go forward with that energy imbued within us as we go in this service this morning. Today is the first Sunday, actually, again, in Advent. And this first week, the uh, candle which we would normally light is for faith. I'm calling it hope faith. And I just want to say a little bit about Advent. Advent is a season observed in Christian churches as a time of expecting. The expectant in the waiting for the coming of the celebration of the Nativity and the birth of Jesus in our human form. The term is a version of the Latin word which means coming. That's really what the word Advent means. And this morning, what I'd like to invite you to breathe into an affirmation that I'm going to be using this week. It's my first Advent uh, affirmation, and it is, I light a living hope of faith candle within me. So again, let's just take that affirmation deep within our soul. I light a living hope faith candle within me. Let's just hold that understanding within us. Let us know that we are connected at all spaces and that we are right where we need to be. All the hope and all the faith we will ever need is right within our very own souls. And we tap that. We tap our divinity. And we know it to be so. May truly this be the week that we are illumined by hope and faith. And again, we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I have a wonderful, I'm a little bit out of sorts here. I have a wonderful comic for you this morning. And it is, you're going to love this one. What is the difference between a praying in a church and praying in a casino? Come on, what is it? In a casino, you really mean it. And of course, I know none of you think that way. I know when you're in church or wherever you're praying, you are always praying from that right place. And we know a little humor is good for the soul. So we just say, thank you, God. This morning, we're going to be speaking about hope and faith. Hope and faith are really related together. And I'd like to share that idea as we go through this talk this morning. I want to first off say that in a third dimensional way of thinking or in the world in which we live with forms and shapes where people believe they're causative, hope is usually a positive maybe. But in truth, in metaphysics, hope is not that at all. Hope is really a strength. It's the assurance that goes with faith. And we'll be talking about, again, that this morning. So my question for you and myself this morning is, how much hope and how much faith do you tap into every single day of your life? How much time have you spent really thinking what hope and faith can do to your prayer practice, to do to your finances, or do, to do to your health, or any kind of relationships that you have? I'd like to start off with a definition by our co-founder, and this is from Charles Fillmore, and he says, faith. Faith is spiritual assurance, the power to do the seemingly impossible. 
I'm going to say that again. Faith, it's spiritual assurance, the power to do the seemingly impossible. That's what I'm talking about. That's faith believing in the invisible. That is the faith knowing that you are the Christ right here and right now. Again, faith is really a perceiving power of the mind, and it allows us to shape substance. Remember, everything comes from the invisible from a fourth dimension into a third dimensional of forms and shapes. But it's created in the fourth dimension. And faith is really the ability to create and shape it and to bring it into manifestation the way we want it to be brought. Again, faith is trusting in the invisible. How much trust do you really put into invisible law? How much trust do you put into metaphysics? Actually, the teaching of metaphysics is based in the invisible, too. Because remember, wherever the invisible is, there's always a counterpart in, uh, in some type of form. Without faith, there is no hope. Without hope, there is no faith. I'm here to tell you we need to define faith differently, especially our hope when we're dealing with hope and faith, because they really go together. They remind me of Peter and Andrew. There are two of our 12 powers. One is faith, one is strength. And we know that the power of joy comes from our strength center also, which is Andrew. So when we fuse those two brothers together, hope and faith and strength and joy, we truly can overcome. Hope is built on faith. Faith and hope are really com complementary ideas. I really want to stress this morning that we're not talking about hope as a positive, a possible maybe, maybe. We're speaking of the assurance, our hope in knowing the truth and the law will work because it's based on faith. We never stop faithing it, as I say it, until we arrive at our destination. Which really kind of begs the question, where are you going in life? Where are you going this afternoon? How is this Sunday going to be any different than the Sunday of last week or the upcoming Sunday? Where are you going? As a good Unity 2 student, we control our direction. We choose. And we have the power to choose hope and faith to direct our life, to truly appear in our life, in our situations, and truly all our relationships. Hope and faith. What it is defined as in the dictionary is it firmly consolidates into form. A crystallization process. It creates the mold. Divine substance is this fluid-like energy the ancients called the ethers. And it is poured out into the forms of the words, the ideas, the feelings, and the emotions that we hold within our own soul self. So the substance is poured into those. So we need to think what kind of ideas... What kind of images? What kind of really dreams are we holding on to? Because it's going to be related to our highest understanding of hope and faith. What we need is a life aim. We need to acquire knowledge. We need to work hard. We need to bring forth realized great life dreams. Are you willing to roll up your sleeves? Are you willing to make this Christmas season different? I don't care about the COVID. I don't care about all the other stuff. What are you going to do different this Christmas season? What are you going to do to activate hope and faith in your life and in your soul? I will tell you through practical truth work, which is having a daily prayer practice, a daily prayer practice, yes, a daily prayer practice, we truly awaken a perseverance within us. And this perseverance truly is a hope faith. We live and we know we can live our dreams in full color. Let's not really dream in black and white unless that's really what we want to do. Let's dream bigger. Let's have a bigger expanse in our life experiences this morning. I'd like to share a very powerful idea, and this is from Robert Schuller, the Crystal Cathedral, and he says, Faith is a positive attack on doubt. We have way too much doubt in our life. Let's deny it. Let's release it. Let's let it go. And again, Robert Schuller says, Faith is a positive attack on doubt. As good Unity True students, we should not have as much fear as we experience. We are the creators and the architects of our own soul life journey. We need to remain in control, which means we need to know who's doing the thinking in our own consciousness. And if we do that, we need to tap into more hope and more faith. 
One of the attributes of living in this hope faith consciousness that is being ushered in by this Advent season is never giving up. You willing to never give up? And I'm not talking about being stubborn here. I'm talking about having a goal, having a purpose, having an intention, and sticking the course. Even if you're drawn off, you get back off the byways, back onto the highway of your divinity. And it's one step at a time. I think one of the things we do when we live in this idea of faith, hope faith, is that we need to think past time constraints. As the Christ, the divine idea of the Christ exists out, out of our time-space continuum. It's outside of the horizontal thinking. It's vertical thinking. So the hope and the faith, these divine ideas which we're sharing this morning, are outside of that third dimensional thinking, which means we can bring that kingdom of heaven consciousness into our everyday experience. What it means is we need to stay confident in our goals, and we need to continue making a concerted effort to attain them. So again, are you willing to do the work? There's no magic pill. There's no magic formula. There's no fairy dust. You have to do the work. And when you do the work, what happens is you experience this truth. You experience hope and faith, and you claim it and know it as your truth. And that's your experience, and no one can take that away from you. That's how you really grow in the Christ nature. I'd like to read a idea, and this is from the Jewish scriptures, and this is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. So what this ancient teacher is trying to show us is that we need to live in a new day and a new dawning of hope and faith every single day. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Thursday night, but every single day. We need to allow these ideas of hope and faith to in, in really ignite within us a deeper understanding of our Christ nature and to truly be who we have come to be. There aren't many days without difficulties, but I'm here to say when you do have a difficult day, we always have room to improve. Not every day is perfect. Not every day is Sunday, but we can learn the lessons that we choose to learn. No one's teaching us. We're choos choosing to see the situations a little bit differently, and we're see willing to see them through the lens of hope and faith. I'd like to say God, God's, God's truth is good unity, true students, really invites us to get a bigger soul picture. So how big is your soul? How big is your soul? Only you can answer that question because the immensity, the textures of it, you get to determine, you get to determine how that soul is going to show up and what it is going to consist of. God's truth invites us to look at a bigger soul picture and truly, really looking too at the overarching stories that we continually tell ourselves. May this be the Christmas season that we stop telling stories that we don't want to hear anymore. May we let them go. And instead, let us inspire ourselves to dig deeper within ourselves to create new stories that we want to tell, stories that are positive, stories that share our transformation, our reawakening into our divine nature. We know with hope, faith, that God's laws are truly promises. Do you think of God's laws as promises? We should. That's what Charles and Myrtle Fillmore taught. I am with you. I am your God. I strengthen you and help you not to be dismayed. Being good, true students, we are never dismayed. We really shouldn't be. If we are firmly standing on the teachings of the one power, one presence, one life and one substance. So again, that calls us back to center. It calls us back to our divinity. May everything we do really spring forth from our divine nature. Again, Robert Schuller gives an idea that we can use on this hope faith journey this morning. Possibility thinking is a threat to impossibility thinkers. We all know people who are negative, even though they don't think they're negative, they are. We know people that are always looking at the dark side. We know individuals that are always saying the cup is half full. 
let's let that go and let's be really a positive thinker. Let us allow hope and faith to ignite within us positivity that we have a spring in our walk, that we wake up joyfully, that we go to bed in a state with not troubles, but we release them. That is what we're called to do as good Unity True students. We know no one has the right, no one has the right to tell us that our ideas of good are too big. No one. No one has a right to tell you that your dreams, your ambitions are too big. That is for your soul to decide, not mine. That's for your soul to decide. So again, it means giving up. It means giving up surely ways that are not going to uh, really work for the betterment of where we want to go. So let's really let go. Let's let go ideas and thoughts. Maybe we need to let go of some ways we entertain ourselves. Maybe some of the books we read. Maybe we need to spend more time out in nature. You get to decide that. And I'm here to say if you tap into this divine idea of hope and faith as brothers, they will truly propel you to your next step. In many ways, our life is like a great tree that must be pruned and cut back to experience its fullest and most abundant growth cycles. I'm here to tell you, we're here to grow. And this life incarnation is all about growth. It's all about growth. So we don't want to shy away. We don't want to shy away from any kind of hope or faith pruning that happens in our life. We change. We evolve as our energy changes within our soul structure, as we meditate more, as we truly believe in what we teach, everything changes in our field of attraction. Because remember, we are the point of attraction. Do you speak from terms of hope and faith? Do you speak during the midst of even cloudy, darkened skies? Do you speak hope and faith? I challenge you this week, if something comes across your life screen and you're not happy about it or it causes you to kind of step back a little bit, maybe to feel a little bit smaller than you normally show up as, I'd say stop, take a deep breath, and breathe into this divine idea of faith and hope, hope and faith. They go together, they're brothers, and together they truly are brothers of thunder because they truly can awaken within us to really Make this life special. Allow this life to be special and be special in this life. From the New Testament, uh, from Paul's letter to the Romans, and this is chapter 12, verse 21. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Are you willing to do good? And the good that I'm talking about has no opposites. This is unconditioned good, an unconditioned good that is based on hope and faith, the purest, purest hope and faith. And it truly will give you a, a different idea, a different dimension of the power within us to really shape and form all of our life situations over again or into a pattern of really healthy, healthy living, which means we need to have spiritual perseverance. Perseverance is a faith, hope, power in action, an intentional internal force within us that is pushing us, propelling us forward to get things done despite of lack of resources or any countless obstacles we may be seeing in our path, especially time constraints. So how much perseverance do you have this week? How much perseverance do you have right now? As we go into this Christmas season, as we go into the birthing story of the Christ, uh, as we remember it in our story in the Nativity, but also it's a time for us to remember who we are. We need to claim that divine inheritance of hope and faith. And when you have hope and faith, you have perseverance. Truth will always, always come through when it's applied. It's an inner hope and faith, and we can lean onto it. We can lean into our desires. It makes us self-confident. It gives us courage. Do you have real courage? I'm talking about unconditioned courage. 
Hope and faith can help you have that courage. It also gives us diligence to stay the course. We need to stay on the path of one power, one presence. I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care what the, what's going on in the media world. What is happening right now? What matters to you, to your soul, the soul with your name on it? What matters to you? Hope and faith are one of the ways that we can really not only tap into that uh, clarity, but continue to move in the direction of our dreams. So I would share with you this morning, keep running the race. And that's your race, not my race. Don't run a race for anyone else. Run the race for you. Run your soul's race. Wherever it leads you, wherever it goes, it is an adventure. It's a spiritual adventure. Use hope and faith and continue on. And you need to believe that the prize is yours to claim it. And you claim it, you desire it, and you feel it when you know this hope and faith. Because hope and faith is a divine energy within you. It recalibrates our whole soul structure. It allows us to achieve. It allows us to be architects, truly, of the Christ. I'd like to share a story with you, and it's called God Speaks. A man whispered, God, speak to me. And a meadow lark sang, but the man did not hear. So the man yelled again, God, speak to me. And thunder rolled across the blue sky, but the man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see you. And a star was shining brightly in the night sky, but the man did not see it. The man shouted again louder, God, show me a miracle. And a life was born. Still, the man did not notice it. The man in deep despair cried out again, Touch me, God, touch me and let me know that you are here, that you are alive, that you're with me. Then God reached down and touched him. And the man, as he felt a shiver, realized that he had a colorful butterfly on his shoulder. And he brushed it away sadly. And he kept on walking alone. We ask and we shall receive. Each one of those experiences that that man experienced was a reaching out for God. But the key, the key is if we're open and receptive really to, to really be able to receive those blessings, those ideas and thoughts, those nudgings within us. Let's not be like that man pushing that beautiful, colorful butterfly off his shoulder. That's God. That's God. God is in the thunder. God is in nature. God is within us. If we're open to it, we can truly see it. There's a moral to this story, and it's about conversations with our own God self. I'm here to say it's a two-way dialogue. It's a two-way dialogue. It means that we listen, and then we respond. We respond, and we listen. That's how you tap into hope faith. That's the hope faith of masters. That's the hope faith that Jesus, the master teacher, tapped into. Henry Ward Beecher shares an interesting aspect concerning hope and faith, and he says, the difference between perseverance and obstinacy is one comes from a strong will and the other from a strong won't. Boy, doesn't that just hit you right in the solar plex? See, if you're being uh, stubborn or having this perseverance in a negative way, which is really a form of stubbornness, that's not what I'm talking about. A perseverance, that spiritual perseverance that I'm speaking about, is rooted in hope and faith. It knows what it has the ability to claim, and it sees it onto manifestation. One of the ways we keep moving forward, moving into this hope and faith, and a, a bigger understanding of hope and faith, these ideas, is to keep moving. We have to keep moving. We have to move our feet. That means going, and sometimes we may stumble, and we might not reach all of our goals, but we know that we are going to be able to get back up and to keep walking step by step. Every step more hope, every step more faith. I'd like to share with you, I've never heard of anyone ever stumbling over something sitting down. We're called to get up. We're not called to just sit and not do anything like a bump on a log. We're called to action. 
Remember, spirit is form and action. That's how we're supposed to take our spiritual nature. We're supposed to take the things that we receive in the silence and then put them to use. Put them to use, not put them on a bookshelf. Now put them somewhere in a cupboard or the garage, but to use those talents because really hope and faith are talents that we can use to truly change our consciousness this Christmas. T.F. Hodge shares this wisdom this morning. Some lean back, but those who lean forward are poised to cross the finish line first. So where's your life finish line? What race are you running? Only you can determine that. Only you set the pace. You set the race that you want to be on. But as true students who are rooted in unity, we're on a race of understanding more deeply our own divinity. So this morning, as we go forward into this Advent season, we really want to hold on to that understanding at even a deeper level. Claim it. Desire it. Make it our own. Our walk of hope and faith is an ongoing conscious expansion. And really what it does, it solidifies our soul essence, brings things together, firms things up. That's what hope and faith does. I'm here to say every prayer that we offer up to the indwelling spirit of Christ within us can truly have more resilience if we truly believe in more hope and faith, especially the divine ideas that they represent. Again, our greatest growth precedes sometimes our most severe losses and frustrations. And I'm sorry to say, I'm not trying to make this true, but many times when we have big losses or we have a deep, deep frustrations, those are real times where spirit has our attention, where we can really begin to change. We can shift. We can show up differently. And again, the pain that we may experience is not determined by the situation on the outside. Outside experiences are not causative unless we choose. We can choose through a lens of hope and faith to look at the situation, dust ourselves off, lace up our shoes, and continue to move forward. Frustration also uh, solidifies our hope-faith forces to trust truth more completely. Just because we say one presence, one power, do you really believe it? Do you really believe it? Because if you really do, again, stress would not have the uh, resonance within your life as it usually or sometimes shows up as. We believe in law that does not change. Just like the tides, just like gravity. It's like natural law. It always works. Doesn't matter if I have red hair or black hair. Doesn't matter if I have shoes on my feet or I'm going barefooted. The law always works. And hope and faith are just like that. They will always work for you. It's an inside soul refinement that happens when you use these ideas. And it prepares us for what definitely, what divinely is next in our journey. So what are your dreams? We're not to the new year yet. But what dreams are bubbling within you? What good book do you still want to read? How many classes do you want to attend with Reverend Michael? Those are good ideas you can think about with a lot of hope and faith. I'd like to share another story with you, and it's called Stick to It. And it gives us some pointers on how we can stay the course, stay the path, stay in this hope, faith, vision. When things go wrong, as sometimes they will, it's like walking uphill. When funds are low and the debts seem high and we want to smile, but instead we sigh. Rest, but we must not quit. Life has twists and turns as every one of us has learned. Many folks turn too early when they might have won had they kept on going. Don't give up through our pay, though your pace may be slow. As the goal is nearer than it seems to our unfaltering faithful soul. We can capture the victories. We can capture victory's cup. How close our golden crown is, if only we knew. Success is failure just turned inside out. Let's stop believing in clouds of doubt. We are so close, even when it seems so far. We stick to our faith when we're hardest hit. That's when the shift and the change occurs. We mustn't quit. We mustn't quit because we can't quit. See, here's the deal. 
your divinity never gives up on you. The divine idea, the divine Christ life in, within your life never gives up. Albert Einstein shares some insights concerning this hope faith, and he says, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just, I, it's just that I stay with problems longer. I'm going to say that one again. It's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. I put the word just in there. How long do you stay with your problems? As any good metaphysician knows, in every problem lies its seed of its own answer. So let's not fight our problems. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's pour a little bit of active faith and hope into the situation. And let's see how we can solve these snags that are occurring in our life. A fall does not deter a hope faith soul. Again, it gives us perseverance. Failure does not demoralize us. It recalibrates our soul forces. It's a hope faith action. It stimulates us. Writing down our dreams. Do you write down your dreams? Do you journal? You should. And you should journal in a place where you can go back and reflect on what you've written. Because when you journal, you have uh, intuition. Your intuition pops up. Intuition will nudge you into certain ideas or thoughts. You don't know where they come from. But they come from this rich, rich understanding of hope and faith. Keep in mind that our hope, faith, plans must be creatively flexible and living plans. Every good true student knows you must be flexible and you must be creative, which means you must live in the now moment and in the now moment and in the now moment. Jim Rohn shares this idea concerning hope faith. Faith and hope are complementary. How long should you try? Until. That's the attitude. Until are you willing to stay the course until you reach your goal? When you have hope and faith, you can definitely do that. And you can know that you will have the assur assurance that it shall happen. I'd like to share some wisdom from the ancient philosopher, Asian philosopher to Confucius. And he says, the man who moves a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. So what kind of stones do you have in your life? What kind of troubles? What kind of situations? What are the things that have really got your sock in a knot? Because it's in those stones are blessings. And with hope and faith poured into those situations, those stones truly will become gold nuggets. Gold nuggets that we can use to really enrich our life. We naturally experience fear for the future, which is kind of natural in some ways. What is going on or what is going to happen to them? Let's stop worrying about them. Let's worry about us. Where are we going to go with this truth? How are we going to use hope and faith? We're not using hope and faith to change other people. Remember, we teach self-transformation, the transformation within us. We're a full-time job. We are a full-time job. So again, we're not learning this or worrying about where other people are. We love them and bless them. But we're always recalibrating and fine-tuning, dialing in where we are. How much more hope, how much more steadfast faith do we need in this current situation? And I'd like to share some uh, wisdom. And this is from uh, J.M. Bari, and this is the man who wrote Peter Pan. And he said, all the world is made of faith and trust in pixie dust. Well, I like that about pixie dust because there is a mystery in life. There are mysteries that we don't know all the answers right now. But that's why we're called to a spiritual adventure. Whoever said being the Christ was going to be a dull life? Being on this journey of rediscovering and reclaiming our divinity, it is a mystery. And I think you need a little bit of pixie dust. You have to believe in the unknown. You have to believe that this truth has the power to do what it says it's going to do. You have to have hope and you have to have faith. So walking through the dark, even in the dark times of our life, even dark chapters we may be experiencing, soulfully we demand of spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit within us, we demand that our hope, faith, powers materialize. Right now, I am hope. I am faith. That's your I am speaking. Use that authority within you and claim it to be so.
In closing, we draw upon our deepest hope, faith, talents, and knowledge to reach them. We are all on a path. We're all moving in according to the speed of our own souls. The question is, are we willing to self-reflect? Self-reflect and see where we are on this road, where we can grow, where we can change, what we can let go. What baggage can we let go that we don't want to carry? Because hope and faith are truly two of the ideas that we want to carry into every experience of our life. When the world says give up, our own soul self whispers one more time. And you know why you can say one more time? is because you have discovered the secret, the divine mystical secret of hope and faith in your life. These are powerful, active ideas. And once they're poured into any consciousness, you change in an instant. You change in an instant. So truly allow hope and faith to not only light the candle, but may it bring true clarity into every situation in your life. May this be the morning that we remember that we are not only hopeful, that we have plenty of faith, but most of all, we have faith and hope, or hope and faith, because we are a repeatable Christ. We are a repeatable Christ right here and right now. We claim it and we know it to be so, and we just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. So I invite you to take whatever your gift may be and put it in the palm of your hands and imbue it with your soul's energy. You can go to youneedaway.com and you can uh, do an electronic donation, or you can go to youneedaway.com and you can get our physical address, or you can always go to youneedaway.com and look at great pictures of the church and me. Just kidding. But whatever your hope and faith is this morning, may the hope and faith be in divinity, the divinity within your soul that's unique to you. No one gives you hope. No one gives you faith. It is within you. Dig it out and use it. And as we imbue this gift, we know it goes through our church. We believe in the world of cause and effect. It goes forth into Unity Village, Silent Unity, Unity Urban Ministerial School, it goes to Daily Word, 913 Tracy, all where we're spiritually fed. We're a tithing church. And we give thanks because we have hope and faith in the belief in tithing. And if you believe that truth with me, if you please affirm, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer of protection. This morning, let us believe this protection is rooted in hope and faith. Those are two divine ideas that shine eternally, and they shine within our soul. Let's live them, and let's claim them for our own lives, for our world, for our country, for this universe. Let us truly live in hope and faith. If you join me, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. May this be the Sunday you rediscover. You rediscover what hope and faith can mean to you. And may you use it, and may you be showered with many, many blessings, as I know you will. We'll see you next Sunday, and God bless.